inside of our character movement component then the thing that i've mentioned a few times is the gravity scale so let's start by adding the improvements to our character with the gravity scale at the moment if we jump up it feels like we're in the air for quite a while it feels a little bit floaty and we're going to need to do something about this jump as well because if we're coming down from a jump and we try to do a double jump we're not getting enough force to propel us back upwards even though we've told it to override the z velocity there's going to be an additional thing here we want to do to make sure that we get that implemented so whilst we're here why don't we do that now so in an air jump before we apply our launch of the character here this is going to be important to test the the final kind of results of how this feels uh, what we want to do is we're just going to cancel out the velocity that we have as well as a, accounting for that we're just going to do a quick reset as well so we'll get the character movement component again as we've done in the past and we're going to set the velocity so again you've seen this before we want to not just set everything here we want to make sure that if we're moving we don't want to kind of stop on the x or the y uh, but we do want them to stop going up because that's where we're going to account for this new velocity we're passing in here so we're going to do a very similar thing here we're going to get the current velocity as well we'll break this into a vector because of course we we only want two of the different float pins here and we're going to make a vector from this we'll plug this make vector just here and we'll plug in the x and the y and we're going to zero out the z so this is going to make a new vector for us with the z being set to zero so when we do this jump now the z velocity will be zeroed out if we do a double jump but the x and y will not which means we can get that uh, much nicer launch even if we're on a kind of downward arc in our initial jump so that's really all that's doing there we probably could do with something fairly similar for the wall jump although it doesn't feel too bad but you do have the option to reuse that if you wanted to just here to reset the velocity as well so I think because that could be a little bit of a utility function, why don't we grab all of these? We'll collapse this to a function. We'll call this one reset jump velocity. This we can just plug in between these. That will do its quick calculation, and then we can apply our z force here. And we'll just do the same thing here. So we're just going to call that new function. Because I think although it's hard to find a state where that doesn't feel great uh, without that being there, I think we will jump into a use case where it's going to help to have that zeroed back out if we start picking up a lot of downwards force and we still want to have a uh, you always want to provide the player with a feedback loop that they understand so you don't want them to try and plan based on a velocity they've seen a hundred times before and then that hundred and first time you apply half the velocity because you haven't accounted for something and they they miss a jump it'll make them feel as though they've been cheated so we just do things like this so that they always know exactly what to, to expect in certain scenarios so that's what we're doing here uh, that's going to improve that so with that accounted for on the character movement component we're going to set the gravity scale to something around about three or four times i think if we look at games like mario i think i remember reading an article describing how that actually in certain cases uses eight times gravity because what we're applying here is a gravity scale multiplied by our project defaults and if we look for what that is if you're not familiar uh, we have a default gravity of minus 980 so essentially real life gravity and that just feels a little bit odd because of the amount of force we're applying upwards it makes everything feel like i've mentioned too floaty essentially so what we have now is we're going to fake the gravity that we have by a four and uh, we're now really not making any distance so we're going to need to come in and account for other things the first of which will be the jump z velocity so we've multiplied this by four we probably don't want to multiply this value by four uh, we can try that if you wanted so you can just if you weren't aware you can type uh, multiplied by or add a sum into this box and it will calculate that for you so the exact multiplication would be 1680 and i think that's yeah that's too high so although we're multiplying gravity by four uh, we don't necessarily want to do that here i think a value around about 1200 might feel quite good that still feels a little bit too forceful i suppose so maybe 900 and then the other thing is our air jump now doesn't have enough force at all to account for this new gravity so what we want to do is come back into the air jump force again while we've promoted this to a variable and maybe make this one 1200 
So we get a little bit extra velocity in the air. There we go. And that is feeling so the character just feels much faster to control. We also want to apply some extra force on the wall jumps because, again, that wasn't feeling as though we were getting very high. Uh, that feels as though it's going to take quite a while to jump up the walls. So this will be one of those points now where you really want to just come in and play around with the different values that you have until you find a kind of setup that makes your character feel good for the type of game that you'll be using them in. So I'm quite happy with the jump force here. I think the gravity scale of four is working pretty well. The way that we're applying the wall slide and the wall jump has ended up being a bit of a problem. So I think for the air force that feels around about fine, the, the jump air force that we're applying. And I think the forward velocity from the wall at 500 actually worked out quite well. Uh, but I think we want maybe more of an arc going up. So we're going to unhook this. We won't be using this one for our wall jump. What I'll do is we'll say maybe something really high needs to be used here, like 1800. We'll promote this to another variable. And we'll call this one a wall jump vertical force. So just to make that slightly different from the the other wall jump force we have here we could probably even rename that one to forward force okay so we're going to need to start breaking down a few little things here we're doing a lot of our own kind of custom logic now and there we go uh, so maybe that's actually too high now but again this is part of what it comes down to is just tweaking numbers and getting that good feeling system so uh, i don't want them to essentially climb an entire wall in two jumps three or four jumps feels a bit better there and what we can get is maybe a nice bit of an arc so one thing i'm kind of aiming for is where you can loop back on yourself a little bit so you could potentially clear a wall jump just from one side so if we had a wall like this uh, what i'd want to do is be able to loop back around and again all of this can be achieved through the character movement component so the next thing we're going to look at is the aerial control that we have one thing that I've kind of skipped up to this point is the acceleration. So if you wanted to play around with the movement speed, I think we, for, for my project at least, I hit on a pretty sweet spot with the movement early on, so I haven't really thought about it too much. Uh, but we have the movement is at the moment based on this acceleration speed. So the easiest way to demonstrate this, if I set this down to something really small, we can see that it takes a very long time to get the character moving up to speed. Uh, and we're adding a very gradual acceleration to this maximum sprinting speed that we have. So if you wanted to play around with that to get that kind of movement system more like Sonic compared to Mario, I think Mario has a very kind of instant, almost hits maximum speed pretty much straight away, whereas Sonic goes through the, the walk to the jog to the run to the like full-blown uh, Sonic sprint then you can play around with the acceleration to kind of mimic that as well. I think for this, again, I quite like that instant acceleration being quite high. Braking force, again, we don't want this feeling too floaty or slidey, so we pretty much come to a stop as soon as we release the key, which again gives the player that kind of immediate feedback that it feels as though as soon as they press something, something's happening, and as soon as they release something, again, their input is received. So that brings us back to our jumping functionality. So we're going to go down to jumping. We can see that the air control here is a value that we have available to us. And this is set to a very, very low value, which means we have very little air control. So when we're in the air, uh, we're kind of stuck on the trajectory that we were given when we were moving. So based on the velocity that we started moving when we're in the air. If we hover over this, we'll see that it should give us a tooltip showing that zero is no control, one is full control. So if we wanted to really have a lot of control over our direction in the air, we're gonna set this to one. So now if I start jumping when I'm moving to the right, I should be able to turn around and get some movement back to the left. So we should be able to use this now on the wall slide. And you can see we can use this single wall, which we couldn't do earlier. We can jump straight forward if we wanted to, but we can now kind of loop back around and make our way scaling up just one side of the wall. So another way that we can just tweak some variables and we can get some completely different kind of uh, mechanics or functionality into our character. So I think with just these we have a pretty good character kind of setup or controller going. You can play around with other things. You've got things like the ground friction, 
You can always change this at runtime as well. So if you wanted to change this to uh, account for things like a more slippery surface, you can change the ground friction. You've also got things like the aerial control boost, boost multipliers and things, and you can hover over all of these to get more information. And again, I'd really recommend just setting some time away. Uh, you can see just how much the character controller offers. So now that we've seen the bulk of what we can use, the general ways that we can uh, kind of apply these, you can then come back in and just start playing around with these values and seeing what they do. Change them, make them an extreme, see how they work, and if they'll improve your character setup. Uh, just a couple of other things before closing out with the, the movement improvements. My character's feeling pretty close to what I want this to be. We've got the rotation rate being controlled by the orient rotation to movement. We might want this to be a little bit responsive, a little bit more responsive. So I'll just set this to exactly double. This just means how fast when we're turning like this does it snap around to look the other way. If we set this really low, then when we're turning, you can see, well, it's essentially it's not turning. I've got to really hold this down for it to do any rotation. So that just speeds up or slows down the rotation. This is useful to know because some people will want to know why it takes so long to turn like this. So if you're just going in one direction, you can see that it takes a little while. The other side to this is that some people might set it too high or you might be in a project where it's set too high. Uh, and then you get this kind of snap. You can see there's like a visual blur because it's snapping so fast and you may not want that. So this is where you can kind of hone those values in as well. I think 720, you can see that it takes a little bit of a click, but that looks pretty smooth for a almost turn on the spot type thing. So again, that looks pretty cool. Looks a bit better than the 360. So I'm gonna use that. And I think we're pretty much good. I think this is, I would be happy with this as a character controller. Like I've said, it's not exactly Mario, but it's much closer to an interesting third person platformer character controller than I've seen in some of the videos claiming to have remade that type of project. Uh, so as I mentioned, this wasn't ever intended to be an exact recreation, but I wanted to show you a really more in-depth use of the default character controller, what it provides, the character movement component, sorry, what it provides and how you can really add some flexibility by adding some of our custom logic like we've done here, whilst using a lot of the built-in functionality as well. One other thing did just pop to mind before we do completely wrap this up, and that is the thing that I mentioned a while ago, which is on the spring arm component we have to do with adding the camera lag to our character. So we've already added this on. So we do have some camera lag when we're moving. You can see that if I move sideways, it takes a little while, a very like split second to catch up with our character. Alternatively, if we took this off, it's going to feel very snappy. It doesn't feel very dynamic. It doesn't feel a whole lot different there, in fact. So if we put this back on and change the value, so you can see here it says lower values are slower, so there's more lag. So if we set this to something really low, then we're really going to see what this does. So we really have to kind of move almost out of frame before this starts following us. And that feels like a very much more uh, kind of cartoony or dynamic camera. So this can feel quite interesting just for different game setups. But on top of that, it also means that you don't get that snappiness like we saw with the crouching movement. So we can add some lag to the camera movement. And you can, again, really play around with this to tweak this to your kind of desired game feel for uh, whether you want this to be very responsive and almost locked on the camera or for it to have that very small delay. I like the kind of more exaggerated dis uh, delay for this character. So we need to get a little bit out of frame before it really catches up, but we can't quite jump out of frame even vertically when we're doing like ball jumps or something. So I think three is pretty good there. And we can also add some camera rotational lag. The name pretty much indicates what that is. So when the camera's rotating, there's going to be a small delay before it catches up with us again. Now this type of thing you can't see too much here. It just feels as though, uh, if anything, that the camera's a little bit gummy. It feels as though it just doesn't quite respond to what you're doing, especially on the lower values. This works a little bit more. You could kind of fake some camera movement in first person or uh, maybe a more kind of top-down RTS style thing might use a little bit of rotational lag. I think for this, if we are going to use it, it's going to be a very subtle feeling. So the, the higher value that it defaults to. Uh, but in fact, I think for this type of setup, I probably wouldn't use the rotational lag. I think the, the lag from the player movement is pretty much 
adding that extra kind of flair to the game, as well as my graphics card is adding some flair there as well. So that is pretty much the whole setup. Yeah, I think that was the only other thing I wanted to cover. Just those kind of final finishing, the extra polish that we can add to the project, just using a collection of components that we already had readily available on our character. Hopefully you've enjoyed that content. And just a reminder, if you wanted to get access to the full topics in this mini course, it's already fully available and uploaded over on Skillshare. I'm providing links in the description down below, which will allow you to sign up with a free premium trial. You'll gain full access to all of the courses over on Skillshare, including this 3D platformer focused controller topic. So be sure to check that out if you wanted to take advantage of the offer whilst it lasts. And as always, I just wanted to say a big thank you to all of the people supporting all of the work that I do here on YouTube, allowing me to keep making this weekly content. So a big thank you to all of the names scrolling down the screen.